Hey everyone, today we're going to continue the Sienna Electronics. We're going to use this ECU and the wiring harness that we made yesterday. You can see the link right here. And we're going to fire an engine that's sitting on the floor in my shop. So it'll be pretty simple. We're going to take this engine that I've got here and we're going to give it the basic life support that it needs to test that this ECU actually works without the immobilizer. And we're going to fire it up. So um, unfortunately, a friend of mine has borrowed my engine hoist, so the engine is sitting on the floor, and I'm probably going to make a couple brackets to hold it off the floor a little bit, but on the floor it will stay, so I can't bring it up on the bench to fire it for you guys. So let's get to the engine. And here's the engine. I've got an old bell housing off of an E-Series. I think it's one of the transmissions I pulled the 3.625 gears out of. And I've got a starter, actually out of a 2010 Camry. And we're gonna put this all together and I'm gonna weld up a quick stand so that this thing's off the floor. And we're gonna fire it up. So I don't wanna take multiple days to shoot this. So you guys are just gonna be getting a time lapse of that construction. I'm not gonna walk through every step. It's not something I expect you guys to be copying anyway, so it's no big deal. All right, so time lapse. couple quarts of the finest stuff that's been kicking around our shop for way too long. Uh, since this is only going to get used here for a few minutes, then there was no reason to use anything fancier. Before we go any further, let's make sure it cranks and sounds like it's got compression. Sounds good to me. So we got to get fuel on here and to avoid an open tank of gas, I'm probably going to snag a fuel line right from the car behind me. And uh, the air intake, the wiring, uh, there's at least one crank sensor to replace and uh, we'll give it a go.
So at this point, mechanically everything's hooked up. We just need to hook up the ECU. And then we need to make a small pigtail for this side of the ECU. And then a small pigtail for this. And we're just going to hook up bare minimum stuff on this. And also, the you'll notice the mass airflow sensor is not plugged in right now. That's intentional because the mass airflow, this mass airflow pipe reads about 30% low. So since this isn't tuned yet, it's actually going to run better if we don't have a mass airflow sensor than if we do. So I'll just leave it disconnected for now. Um, I might fix it by the end of this video. I might not. I don't know. So let's go to the bench and whip up a quick uh, bare minimum wiring harness. All right. So we're just going to use this temporary fuse box. We're not wiring this to go into a car at all. We're just wiring it to see if it fires and to see if the immobilizer is disabled. So I'm really going to cut a lot of corners here. Um, I went in my wiring harness pile and I was able to dig out the appropriate terminals. So I got this thing populated for fuel injector power, ignition front and rear, AFR power, even though we don't have any AFR sensors yet, drive-by wire power, and mass airflow power. And I'm just taking a guess at these uh, fuse values here. If something blows, I'll go look it up, but don't take these for gospel. So let's see, we'll put 10 amps on fuel injectors. We'll put 10 amps on ignition coils. Another 10 amps for air to fuel ratio sensors. Actually, we're gonna put the seven and a half right there. power. Sorry, this is drive-by-wire power. Drive-by-wire power. We will also give it a 10 amp. And then 5 amps for the mass airflow sensor and the perch solenoid. Alright, and there's that. We do need an input to this. Next, we gotta get that connector. And there's even fewer pins on this one. Things that we need to make it run are the constant battery power, the uh, these two other battery powers, and the ignition switch. So, formal wires. This is the uh, plus B. I'm going to want to go get a 20 amp fuse for that. And that. 5 amp fuse will be fine for this one. And then ignition switch. Okay, and ignition switch will get a 5 amp. And what I found handy was a 15, not a 20. So we're going to say that's what I wanted to do. All right, right. that's it. As simple as that looks, that's all we should need to be able to run that engine. So let's give it a go. Okay, I'm just putting that on loose so that I can pull it off if I need to. Now, need to turn the fuel pressure on. Actually, we're going to come back to that. Let's turn the fuel pressure on first. All right, just a quick jumper to turn on the fuel pump. All right. Let's see if she fires. There's the answer. I got rid of the immobilizer on the Sienna ECU. I just need to make a tune for it now. Anyways, 
Um, I want to get this video out today because I know a bunch of you guys are waiting on the last video. So I'm going to go edit this. Have a good day, guys. There'll be more information coming on this here soon. Bye.